little history for you there. But meanwhile, we're doing some physics. Um, recall, for parallel plates, I will almost always tell you the voltage that's going to be given by the battery, or I'll label it on there. Or, I mean, maybe for giggles, I'll give you enough information that you can calculate the voltage. But it varies directly with the distance between the plates. Don't write this down. This is just as a thought experiment. For example, if I make this 1,000 volts, and this distance here is 10 centimeters, then every centimeter of travel will be 1,000 volts. If I travel through 3 centimeters, I'll have gone through a potential difference, a change in voltage of 300 volts. It's a nice linear function. And this also gave us a constant electric field. It gave us the idea that the electric field between parallel plates was the change in voltage divided by the distance that you traveled. Now let's take it one step further. Recall that for a test charge placed at a point whose voltage is known, we can find potential energy using, well, we're talking about potential energy and voltage. We defined voltage as the amount of potential energy a charge had at a given location. So Danielle, if you could do me a favor and rewrite this to get potential energy by itself, please. Typically, I'm writing it as QV. I'm trying to put the letter Q where the letter M shows up in our mass because because they kind of behave mathematically the same. And so I would not take marks off if you wrote Q uh, if you wrote VQ, but uh, QV. Today is the day when we're going to run into equations that have an uppercase and a lowercase v in them. And so you're going to notice for my uppercase v's, I'm going to put the little serif fonts so you know that's an uppercase v. For a lowercase v, I won't. Um, example one, find the work done by an external agent that moves a positive 2 microcoulomb charge from the negative plate to the positive plate. Mathematically, this is the same as lifting an object off of the ground. You're giving it potential energy. You're doing work. And the reason I know that is, Hannah, what's the voltage on this upper parallel plate right here? Positive or negative? It's more positive than this. This does not want, this positive charge does not want to go to the upper plate. There is a force pulling it down just like gravity. Maggie, what does this question want me to find? I'm going to start out going change in potential plus change in kinetic. Graham says, Mr. Duick, wait a minute. You said one of the nice things is we could also just go force times distance. We can also go work equals force times distance. I'll show you how we'll end up in the same location no matter what. But this time, it's going to be a little faster to start here because the change in kinetic is zero. It says assume the charge begins and ends at rest. And Danielle, in the box up above, what did you tell me that potential energy was equal to? So it seems to me reasonable to say that the work is going to be equal to Q times the change in voltage, because that's what the change in potential energy would be. And there is our new equation for how much work it takes to move a charge through a voltage, as long as we have a nice constant electric field. Uh, I could have gone like this, work equals force times distance, and then I could have said work equals Q times E, times d because this is e for electric field and then i could have said work equals q times the change in voltage divided by distance because that is what electric field is and can you see the letter d cancel the d's cancel and i end up with q change in voltage either way let's crunch this how big a charge is the external agent moving 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6. How big is the voltage? 120 volts. Uh, what do you get? It's going to start with a 3. I know that. I can tell you that much. If 3 times 10 to the negative 4. I'll go 3.0. I'll go to 2 sig figs times 10 to the negative 4. Units, Ethan, it's uh, work. Also energy. 
Nick, help him out. Thank you. Okay. Now here's what else that means. Because you've done work lifting this charge up to the top, if you let it go, since it now has potential energy, you've stored energy in it, it will fall, quote unquote. It will uh, hit the ground with kinetic energy. In fact, now that I know how much potential energy it has, I could actually calculate how fast it hits the ground because it would all turn into kinetic. I would need to know the mass of the charge and then I could find V. Like um, this one here, example two. I like example two, I like example two. Example two is a nice question. If we take example two and a little bit of cleverness, we're very close to inventing television. Really? Yeah. Uh, find the final speed of an electron beam. If it's accelerated by 125 volts, there are no external agents, so system energy is conserved. We're going to use conservation of energy. How do I know that? First of all, Trevor, did this question say how much work? I'm going to also then argue that this question here, where once I lift it up, I can drop it and it'll fall down. I'm going to argue that this mathematically is this question just turned 90 degrees. If you turn your head sideways, we've already lifted it up because the electron is negative and this is negative like charges are going to repel. It is going to feel a force pushing it this way. It's going to fall to the right. And right here, don't write this down, that's where the ground is. So you can sort of imagine I've lifted up an object. I've given it MGH, which is gravitational potential energy. Here, I've given the electron electric potential energy. We'll come back to an equation for that. And when I let it go, uh, I've dug a hole so that it can keep falling. It can go through an opening. Uh, the only weakness with that analogy is if it was gravity gram and I dug a hole, once it got to the hole, it would continue to speed up. That's not going to happen here. Once it gets to here, it's used up all of its potential energy. And now Newton's first is going to take over. It's going to keep going at a straight line at a steady speed. So there's a lot to unpack here. Trevor, did this question say how much work? If I think of height in this direction, is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? There isn't a yucky, curvy path, but I'm telling you, we should solve this with conservation of energy. You could solve this, by the way, with forces and acceleration and velocity, but we're going to do this with energy. We're going to get Ke initial plus Pe initial equals Ke final plus PE final. Trevor, are any of these zero? Because that's, once it reaches this line right here, it's fallen to the ground, quote, it's used up all of its potential energy. And what's VI? Look at the picture. So no kinetic initial. Trevor, what's kinetic energy been since day one? A half. So this hasn't changed much. What's potential energy? I'm not going to go with KQ1, Q2 over R because there is no R. This is parallel plates and there isn't two charges. What's potential energy? I think it's in the box on the previous page. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the equation that has a V and a V in it. How would I get speed by itself, Trevor? Uh, by and times by? And square root. Yeah. This is, ends up being fairly clean, actually. The final speed is going to be 2 times Q times V divided by M. The final speed is going to be 2 Q. Trevor, it's an electron. Yes and no. And here's where I've kind of fibbed a bit. I have told you that when you're using the ones with the absolute values, don't put the signs in. And I said to you, scalars, signs. Trevor, what is everything here in... Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the square root, by the way. I apologize. What is everything here inside of a square root? Can you take the square root of a negative? Then please just put positive everything into there, okay? Okay. 
What was the voltage that we're traveling through? By the way, if you're wondering where the negatives cancel, if you let the charge be negative, you would also say that the voltage was final minus initial because it's a change in voltage, and you would go 0 minus 125, and you'd have a minus. You know what? If it's inside the square root, Nick, just put positive values in, okay? Uh, divided by, Trevor, what's the mass? It's an electron. You're going to get something, I think, in the 10 to the 6th range. Maybe 10 to the 7th? Ethan? For what it's worth, you could also have done this. VF equals question mark. Trevor, what's VI? What's the distance that we're traveling? Did they give me the distance that we're... Oh, you know what? They didn't give me this distance. I apologize. I can't do it in this method. There's going to be one later on where I can actually put D equals and then put A equals question mark, solve for A using F equals MA, and then go VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, and you'll get the same answer. The reason we can get away with that is we have a nice constant electric field, and therefore we have a nice constant force, and so a lot of our physics 11 is back in play. So as we see above, we get this equation here. We get the idea of QV equals a half mv squared. If we start at rest and we pass all the way through a voltage, really what we're saying is all of its potential energy turned into kinetic energy. But just don't confuse V and V. This is the beginnings of particle accelerators. What if I wanted the electron to go faster, uh, bump up the voltage? What if I wanted it to go slower, reduce the voltage? Or if it was a proton, make this a positive voltage, we'll have the same effect. And we can start to predict how fast objects, particles, charged particles, electrons and protons specifically, are going to leave our electron gun or our proton gun. I like example three. I like example three. Example three is a nice question. An electron already moving at 5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second enters a set of accelerating plates. Find its speed when it leaves the plates. Cool. Chloe, what's this question asking me to find? How much work? No. Speed, you say. You started to say, and I cut you off. Uh, is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? There's not a yucky curvy path, but I think I'm going to solve this with conservation of energy. This one, I'll also show you how we could solve it using force and V final. But I'm going to solve it using conservation of energy. I'm going to go Ke initial plus Pe initial equals Ke final plus Pe final. Here, Chloe, the only one that's zero is my final potential energy because when I get to there, which I'm treating like the ground, I've used up all of my potential. It's all turned into kinetic, and now I'm going to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. Kinetic energy is still a half mv squared plus. But what are we writing now for potential energy between plates? And where is that from? You can sort of see it hidden on your blue sheet in the voltage definition where I said big V equals PE over Q. So QV. And Danielle, you're starting to see a little bit why I prefer QV over VQ because it looks more and more like MG or MA or you know, in the same location. Um, that's going to equal a half MV, little v squared. Chloe, I have a couple of one-halves. I haven't done this trick for a while, but I think I'm going to choose to go times by 2, times by 2, and times by 2, and that'll cancel out this half, and that'll cancel out this half. And what I really end up with is mvi squared plus 2q big V equals mvf squared. At this stage... If you wanted to, Chloe, you could crunch this as a number, get an answer, and then divide by m square root. But I think I can, this is one of the times where I can get the VF by itself. 
Chloe, how would I get the VF by itself? This isn't too bad. So VF is going to be M. It's an electron. VI squared, uh, 5 times 10 to the 5th squared, plus 2. Q, it's an electron, and I'm inside square roots. Pretty sure I want the positive values. What's the change in voltage? Be very careful here. It is not 600. What is it? Huh? Yes. all divided by M, it's an electron. This one I think you get in the 10 to the seventh range, I think, because we've already got some initial kinetic energy and instead of only going through 125 volts, we're going through 500 volts, which is a way larger voltage change. So I suspect you're going to get a 10 to the 7th. Although I could be wrong. What'd you get, Chloe? Oh, it's still working? I thought, I thought you were doing a lookup. My bad. What'd you get? Oh, still working? Okay. Ethan, what'd you get? You're pretty quick on the calculator. 1.33 times 10 to the 7th. Anybody else? Yeah. Yep. So... This even gives me, Ethan, the ability, if I already know the object's incoming speed, to really fine-tune how fast it leaves. The, the other way you could have done this, by the way, is you could have gone, don't write this down, just watch. You could have said VF equals question mark, VI is 5 times 10 to the fifth. The distance that we're traveling is 0 0.01. They gave me that distance right there. And you could have found A by going F over M. How would I find F? Oh, that's going to be QE. I don't know the electric field. Oh, that's going to be the change in voltage over the distance. And if you do that, you'll notice you actually end up doing a lot of these same numbers along the way. And, this, and you'll use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. You will have to take the square root to get the VF by itself in the same way we did the square root here. In fact, you would find a lot of your numbers ended up showing up very similarly. I don't know which way is faster. I figure energy is a little more comfort zone-ish. Uh, if you ask me to find the acceleration now, though, now that I know V final and I know V initial and I know D, I would find the acceleration by going VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So now that I have that V final, way easier. Let's invent TV. Um, I, 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 again, I've mentioned this before, but I should point out, this is the type of television that you might have seen growing up that when you look at it from the side... looked an awful lot like that. It had a slightly curved front screen. So this isn't even the flat big box that you may have had seven or eight years ago, 10 years ago. And it's certainly not the flat screens that many of us have now. This is probably what many of you had or your parents had as a computer monitor sitting on their desk, okay? We're talking about that type of television. I will, because people always ask, later on in class, explain to you how flat screens work. They're really cool as well. But that's not physics 12. It requires some transistors and quantum physics and things like that. Don't write this down. I'm really going to muck this diagram up, and then we're going to do a better job writing it down. 
the one thing you can write down if you want to is you can put a person sitting in a chair. This here is the TV screen that they're going to see. So the person sees this image. How do we make TV? The first thing is we need an electron gun. Now the fancy term for the electron gun, it's called a cathode ray tube. When J.J. Thompson first found electrons, he thought they were a ray. He called them a cathode ray, and then he realized that they were particles. It was a ray made up of trillions of little particles. So how do we do that? Don't write all this down. I'm really going to muck up the diagram. We charge this really strong negatively. How strong? Strong enough that its electric field will actually rip or ionize electrons off of this and make them free-floating. Okay? Easy enough to do. We'll also charge this positively. So which way is this electron going to feel a force here? To the, I'm looking for where it starts with the letter R. We want to get a very fine electron beam. So this gap right here is exaggerated. I would make it very narrow because I don't want an electron to be able to get out like that. I'll make this very narrow. And then what I'll also do, and I didn't show this in the diagram, I'll put a negative plate there. And I'll also put a negative plate there. And what that's going to do is it's going to push the electrons right to the middle. And so you're going to get a pretty straight beam of electrons coming out. Why do I care about that? So we have this beam of electrons. And then it gets to an area that we call the deflecting plates. These two plates can deflect it up and down. There's a second set of plates that I didn't bother drawing. And those plates would be aligned if this is positive and this is negative, these plates can def deflect it left and right. You can see a picture on the next page, and the next page picture shows you two sets of deflecting plates, one that will deflect the electron up-down, one that can deflect the electron left-right. I've only showed the one that deflects it up-down. Aisha, what's the charge on this upper plate here? So the electron's going to get deflected up. What if I bump up the voltage? The electron will get deflected up even more. What if I turn off the voltage? Electron will do this. This is black and white TV. This is why if you've ever seen an old black and white TV, when you first turn it on, you just see a big white dot at the center of the screen. The deflecting plates haven't warmed up yet, but the electron gun is firing electrons straight ahead. And then to get an actual picture, this screen here is painted with a phosphorescent paint a paint that will fluoresce, that will glow when an electron hits it. So that if an electron hits it right there, the viewer will see a dot. Also, how fast the electron is traveling, how much energy the electron has, determines the brightness. So if I have it hit here but not traveling as fast, then I can have a gray dot instead of a bright dot. And if I don't have it hit at all, I'll see a black dot and there's your black and white TV. Then what I really rapidly do is I paint a whole bunch of these dots really quickly, and your brain resolves that into an image. I paint 60 complete frames per second. I fill the screen 60 times a second. That's black and white TV. It was a pretty simple, straightforward analog technology. No need for fancy schmancy parts. You could build it and it would work. It was relatively foolproof. You didn't get a really, really clear image because this beam was never perfectly straight. There was always a bit of variance in your deflections. And it depended on how many pixels, how many dots, how many little small dots you could fit on the back of your black and white screen. But it's pretty effective. Nope. Let me erase all this. So put your pencils down, look up. Let's look at the next diagram then. So here's a better one. We have here our cathode, our electron gun. Here is the focusing anode that pushes the, cath the electrons towards the center so that we get a nice fine beam. These plates would deflect the electron up and down. These plates will deflect the electron left and right, and we can put an electron, a beam, a dot. We can make any pixel that we want to turn on and off. TV. Example five, here's a side view 
of a TV. We used to really dive into this. Uh, this question here has part A, B, and C. I used to go all the way to part F, and I'll tell you what we could figure out if we wanted to. It was nerdly cool, and I dove into it 15 years ago because kids' TVs still worked that way. I, I've eased up because now flat screen television works with a very different principle, and so I don't quite do the dive. But we have here an electron gun with 1,200 volts that's sending out electrons. Here's the deflection yoke that's causing the electron to be deflected up or down, definitely up in this case. Okay. Nick, what does A want me to find? Keep reading. In other words, it wants me to find the speed it leaves here at. Okay. Is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? This is conservation of energy. KE initial plus PE initial equals KE final plus PE final. Nick, what's VI? Yep. And once I pass this little gate right here, Nick, I'm going to argue that I've used up all of my potential energy. What I'm really saying is we're going to get uh, potential energy traveling through the voltage, and we're going to turn that all into kinetic. I get the equation that we wrote earlier. I get QV equals a half mv squared. Q big V equals a half m little v squared. How would I get little v by itself, Nick, my friend? Uh, by times, times by two. square root. Two. Okay. 2 Q, it's an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Shouldn't just take a negative in there? I'm taking the square root. I want it to be positive. V, 1,200 volts. M, it's an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. What do you get? Probably going to get something in the 10 to the 6th, 10 to the 7th range. Maybe 10 to the 5th, but we want these going fast because we don't want you to notice when you're watching the TV screen that there are dots hitting it. We want it to your, to your brain continuous. Sorry? 2.1 times 10? 2.1 one what? 205. So 2.05? I'm going to go to three sig figs. You'll see why. Times 10 to the what? Seventh meters per second. And that's, if you're looking at the side view here, that's this velocity or speed. That's in the horizontal direction. Graham, what does B want me to find? So once I get to this section here, this electron is going to experience a force up. And I think I'm going to solve this using forces, not using VF and VI. And T. I think I'm going to say this, F equals MA. But here's the question. Which force is pushing it up? Look up. Electric force. How can I write electric force? Why can't I go KQ1, Q2 over R squared? <coughs> Only one charge, and R is, I mean, the electron is circular, but it's the distance, you know, let's use something with plates. Is there another version of force that I have? I'm going to write it as QE equals MA. Oh, this isn't too bad. Graham, how would I get the A by itself? A is going to be QE over M. Wait a minute. I don't know E. Or do I? How do I find the electric field between plates? I'm going to get Q big V over MD. Which Q? It's an electron. Which V? This one. 
which distance am I going to use the five centimeters or the two centimeters? Neither, Mr. Duick, fine. Am I going to use the 0 0.05 meters or the 0 0.02 meters? The 0 0.02. This one they're giving just to throw me off. Also, actually, no, they're giving me that five because I can use that to calculate other stuff. So I'm going to get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, 750 volts divided by 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31, 0 0.02. Mr. Dueck, shouldn't you put a negative in for the charge? Uh, what are we finding, Graham? Which is a vector, and I know the direction up. Oh, since I know the direction, I'll take the absolute value of everything because I've already used uh, the fact that the electron is negative and going to be attracted to the positive. I've used like repel and unlike attract to figure out a direction. What do you get? Uh, by the way, this is going to be pretty big. I think it's in the 10 to the 15th range. So if you get that, don't freak. 6.59 times 10 to the 15th. Anybody else? Round it off properly. meters per second squared. So here's what we have right now. We have the electron traveling, don't write this down, I'm really going to gum up this diagram. The electron is traveling this way at 2.05 times 10 to the seventh. If I knew how fast it was traveling vertically, I could add those two vectors together. In fact, they would be a horizontal and a vertical component. And I can actually calculate the final speed. that it, or the, Actually, I could calculate the velocity. I could get the magnitude of the speed using Pythagoras. But I can even figure out the area of the uh, angle theta. And I could figure out where it was going to hit. We used to do that. If you're wondering what you're missing in part D and E and F, we actually went all the way up to in including finding angle theta, and we can start to predict how you would design a television. We're not going to quite do that. However, hmm. Jacob, what's uh, C want me to find? You back with me now? It wants me to find the time for the electron to go that way. Hmm. Well, time, t equals question mark. I guess I also know the speed. It's 2.05 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. Jacob, can I use this acceleration down here? Uh, no. Why not? What direction is this way? Horizontal, what direction is this? We've got to remember our horizontal and vertical, and we can't put a horizontal into a vertical and vertical and horizontal. In fact, horizontally, there's no acceleration because there's no force acting on it, which means I can say A equals 0, and I can say D equals 0 0.05. I can find the time by going D equals VT plus a half AT squared. But why didn't I bother writing plus a half AT squared? A is 0, and so I can find the time by going D over V. Which distance? The 0 0.05. Which V? The 2.05 times 10 to the 7th. That's why, Ethan, I asked for the extra sig fig. And so this electron is going to be deflected for 0 0.05 divided by 2.05 times 10 to the 7th. It's going to be deflected for 2.44 seconds times 10 to the negative 9 seconds. Not only is that how long it's going to be deflected for, Grace, that's how long it's going to be accelerated for. So here's the parts that I chopped off, Sam. I used to, part D, ask, okay, what's its vertical velocity when it leaves? Because its initial vertical velocity right when it hits is 0. But it's getting accelerated up at 6.159 uh, times 10 to the 15th meters per second squared. For a time of that, I would use VF equals VI plus AT. And I could find the vertical component. 
we already knew the horizontal component, and then we would just add them tip to tail, and we could find angle theta, and we could find the final speed. We could do all sorts of nice stuff. I'm not going to ask you that, though. But it's kind of cool. What's your homework? First of all, we're done the unit, technically. You can now, in theory, do every question on the ultimate review. You want to start to whittle away at that, maybe over Easter weekend. I'm not going to probably give you formal homework over the Easter weekend because it's a four-day weekend, but you might want to start kind of chugging away at that. Uh, here's what I assigned. One, two, three, four, five. Eleven and twelve. One, two, three, four, five. Eleven and twelve. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Um, I'm assigning 11 and 12. I like those. I'm not saying I like those. I like those. I like those. I like those because in number 11, you're being asked to find the fo force once between point charges and once using plates. So you can see the differences in those methods. And in number 12, you're being asked to find the electric field once between point charges and once between plates. So you can find the difference between those methods as well. And then you can also do every question on the <coughs> ultimate electrostatics review. <laughs>